you would have asked me from the get-go how long I thought Suicide Squad had to prove themselves, I would have said a full year. The full season one through season four plan. Now I'm not so sure. We're going to talk about why in just a moment and how hate versus quality will play a big factor in that. But before we do that, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, I am Old Head Gaming. And of course, you want to stay up to date on all the latest gaming news. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell. Now, this video is going to break down three different things that has been a problem for Suicide Squad. And first, we're going to talk about how the game has been handled going forward. So the game itself, quality wise, was pretty consistent during both the beta and early access. Yes, the hate campaign on which we're going to talk about much more in just a second had been in full force, but people were buying the game. It was the number three selling game in January and people were playing it. And then the updates came and the updates have single handedly just ruined any fun for most people. Now, I had played about 50 hours before the first update hit during early early access. and was really enjoying the game um there was some problems of course but it wasn't anything major nothing glaring nothing breaking people's entertainment because what's going to happen is in a game like this you need to maximize the people you have and they haven't done that so the first thing hit and i've had the mastery bug since the get-go so i've always been relying on playing with other people to raise my finite level to get my gear etc etc so that bug was a huge problem that is still affecting everyone. And I don't think they have any idea, even based on what they said today, how to fix it. And two, it broke multiplayer completely. Now, multiplayer had been kind of in shambles from the get-go. And now people can't play together hardly at all. It has led to a complete catastrophe of the player base. With every update showing the player base, the game's not worth playing because it's so horrifically broken does not fill the community with a lot of positivity. Now, here's the thing. I try to stay as neutral as possible, and I came in with a relatively positive mindset towards Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. But unfortunately, Rocksteady has done everything they can to make sure that we don't enjoy ourselves. And I'm not talking about the campaign. I actually thoroughly enjoyed the campaign and still do. But the fact that the whole thing about a looter shooter is endgame is important and most of us can't access it is a major problem. The second biggest problem was clear expectations based on what happened in 2023 from Warner Brothers was that regardless of controversy, Suicide Squad should have been able to compete close or at least be close to the performance of Hogwarts Legacy. Now, both games were swirling in controversy up until their launch. Of course, Hogwarts Legacy was basically the focus of the fact that J.K. Rowling, who is the creator of Harry Potter, is very anti-trans and had led to a very divisive how people felt about Harry Potter universe in, a, in its own right. But it did not seem to really affect the sales of Hogwarts Legacy. Regardless of how many boycotts were called, it sold 23 and a half million units last year. It was the number one selling game. Like, literally sold the most of any game. And coming up to the launch of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, it was sounding very similar with all the boycotts being called and all the anger towards the creators. In this case, it was for killing Batman. And Warner Brothers doesn't seem like they produced the same amount. So clearly... Being anti-trans did not affect Hogwarts Legacy as being disrespectful towards Arkham Batman was for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And the thing is, as a single-player game with relatively good ratings, Hogwarts did just fine. And people played the game, enjoyed the game, and they saw the ratings, they saw the reviews, they saw the streams, and they played it themselves. Unfortunately, that was not the case for Suicide Squad, where the ratings have not been good, and those who were enjoying it have really been pushed out by the fact that all the updates make the game literally worse. 
So you have, this is the problem. It's also a live service game. Live service games really need to prove themselves because there is a natural propensity to hate them in the first place. Fortunately for live service games, they usually have an opportunity to balance the budget with, even if they're lacking on sales as much of pure units, they can move those microtransactions. Well, Season Zero didn't have the Battle Pass, so there's nothing there. There's been two different changes to the store, and the content has been atrocious. Let's be honest. The skins are terrible. They're not engaging. They're not enticing. I got 2,000 free Luther coins for the fact that things were kind of broken on the first day of early access, and I still haven't spent them because there's literally nothing I want. Like, that is not how you engage your player base. So Hogwarts Legacy just produced a sheer amount of ungodly sales. 23.5 million sales is a metric crunk ton of units pushed. But Suicide Squad had an opportunity to go in the back door and at least get stuff off of their microtransactions, and they're not even doing that. If Warner Brothers has expectations that Suicide Squad should keep up in some sort of dollar increment, whether it's straight units or a combination of units and microtransactions, and they are feeling very underwhelmed by the performance that coming out of month one, that is not a good sign. How the community that actually enjoyed the game has feeling about it is not a good sign. Because here's the thing. Say what you want about Marvel's Avengers. The game was a bit of a shitstorm, but they knew how to maximize microtransactions at Crystal Dynamics like no company I ever seen. It didn't matter how much they missed their mark by getting their content out, how late their updates were, how broken they were. That store, like clockwork, was set every week. Boom, new skins. Mythic skins, Marvel skins, you name it. They found a way to keep that game afloat on sheer backs of their community. Them spending money. And Rocksteady doesn't even seem to have that understanding of how to do microtransactions. This game is not for the long, unfortunately. And I'll be honest with you, if it gets through season one, it might be a miracle. The only way I think it gets through season one is if it's just guaranteed. I I want to play Suicide Squad. I've said this for two weeks now. I really want to enjoy the game. I enjoyed the hell out of it in pre-launch, and I enjoyed it when I could play it. But I have not had a game that has really forced me out of it the way Suicide Squad has in a very long time. With sheer ineptitude. And when it comes to the developer updates or them talking on their Discord, they don't even seem to have a way to fix their biggest problem. And that is that people can't access this, the end game by themselves. Not every time do you have to play with someone. I sh would love to be able to log on for five or ten minutes, bang out a couple of quests and, and increase my mastery. But I can't. Then again, I also can't play with other people either, so... They've missed on Twitch drops. Most people have to contact Warner Brothers directly to get their free skins. Their store is absolute dog shit. And they still even got their battle pass out yet. And a lot of us will get it for free on the first one. So there's no more money to be made there. I don't know what they're going to do for a revenue stream. And that leads me to believe that the game's going to be shut down sooner rather than later. Now, I would love to be wrong. And I would love to see them make a huge comeback, you know, but they have to hit strong with season one and find some sort of foothold. If they miss in season one, it will be down the hill from there and only the hardcore will be playing. And as much as I really want to dive in and be part of the Suicide Squad community, I don't know where to go because I can't even make content around it because I can't play the game. I can't get enjoyment out of it, even just for playing for funsies because I can't play the game. And a lot of people are feeling the exact same way on a game that some have spent $100 on to basically just get screwed over. And it's not because we didn't like the story, and it's not because we didn't like the direction. It's because the game is just broken. And that is why people aren't spending extra money on it. Like, even if I saw the best skin on Earth, I would never spend beyond the free money they gave me because I don't want to support this. This is fucking train wreck. I know I'm not the only one who's been feeling this. I want to hear everyone's thoughts on the matter. Uh, if you've been having a really good experience, like, I know not all of us have been just absolutely destroyed by this. Like, I love Pixels, and I love watching Pixels play because he can actually play the game. 
But him and I's experience have been completely different because I can't play it and he can. And that's the problem. If you can't keep it across the board for your entire community, that's a huge issue that you need to address. And two updates later, we're not any closer. And the developer notes today didn't mention anything about the a, a fix coming anytime soon. This game is shot itself in the foot. And it's not the problem that they killed Batman. It's the problem they're killing themselves. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I, I want to have a good dialogue on this. So let me know your thoughts. As always, thank you for watching. And later, mates.